Happy New Year, guys. This is Man Bites Film. My name is Lewis. I hope you guys all had a safe uh, New Year's Eve last night, and I hope you guys aren't too hungover. So, as promised, this is the last of the five episodes for this week, and this is the big one. This is my favorite show so far of all time, Doctor Who. And unfortunately, I have not seen all the, the show because it's been running since 1963. I just, it's close to impossible to catch up to all these um, episodes. So I'm just going to be reviewing the current, um, I guess you could call it the, the modern Doctor Who, which started in 2005. But let me go into a little bit of history first on it. The show started in uh, November 23rd, 1963 and ran continuously until December 6th, 1989, in which it took a hiatus and was picked up on, as an American a movie in 1996. The, the movie was actually supposed to spawn the, the new show with an American cast, American ensemble, completely American show which didn't get picked up because the movie failed completely and until 2005 where bbc picked it up again with the first doctor in the new incarnation which is technically the ninth doctor okay let's go into a little bit of history if you have not seen this show and you've lived under a rock for the last 10 years pretty much um the show revolves basically around the doctor he is an alien called a Time Lord. The race is called Time Lords. And um, he is basically a master of time and space. He is able to travel through all of time and space. And his race in particular was basically like the guardians of time and space. As cool as that freaking sounds, that's exactly how it is. And the way that they they uh, control it is they travel back and forth and make sure that the rules of time according to them are followed that time is not being altered by any one particular race time is not being threatened by any one particular race and a whole bunch of other things that really i have not had the the episodes to actually fully go into so i don't want to go into other than what i already know um the doctor can regenerate and this is a great aspect of the show and that's why it's been running since the 60s successfully um whenever the doctor dies he reincarnates into a, a regenerates into a new doctor okay and they can change the actor all right he has according to to the legend 11 lives okay and this is obviously changed because they wanted to continue the show with a very very interesting way and i'm not going to go into that because that's completely spoilers on that part and the what do you call it the doctor reincarnates every time he dies so whenever he dies you don't know if he's actually gonna die because obviously the show continues on <laughs> and it's still going on so he does reincarnate and the whole race does this so you don't know in the old show whether the time lords are going to die if that's their last life or they're going to continue on so it, it, it leaves very very interesting aspect of it and this particular time lord stole his um, machine that travels through time and space the TARDIS right and he ran away to earth right he was running away from all the politics and all the crap that was going on on his planet and he didn't want any part of it so he said to you guys i'm leaving and he was supposed to be part of the hierarchy of the the of gallifrey which is the planet where he he comes from and he said nope not gonna do it i'm out peace so he steals a machine and he travels to earth which coming from earth you'd be like what why why earth if you could travel through all the freaking time and space why earth that has not been explained yet and hint at it throughout the show saying that he's part human but that never really has gotten proven it's never been said yet so we don't know for sure about that 
So that would be a big explanation to why he travels to Earth all the time and he protects it. All right, but we ha have no conclusive evidence of that yet. And he lands on Earth and his TARDIS is supposed to have like a chameleon effect whenever he lands on a planet so it doesn't stand out, right? And not only that, but it has like something that that camouflages it to the regular person's eye and people just overlook it rather than stare at it. But something happens in the first couple of seasons in which the, the, what do you call it, the chameleon circuit as they call it, gets stuck. So it gets stuck in one of the most iconic images of all time, which is the phone, police phone box from the 60s. Okay, it's the most absurd thing in the world to be stuck on, but it got stuck on it. And especially in modern day London. Can you imagine seeing that thing? You'd be like, what the hell? But it's so iconic and it's gotten stuck in so many people's mind. That's the first image that you see is seeing the TARDIS flying through time and space in that weird vortex looking thing, which is so freaking phenomenal. And of course the intro of every episode and the music. The music, oh my god, that freaking music. When you hear it, I have it as a ringtone. That's how awesome it is, all right? Um, that's pretty much the backstory of him. He picks up companions along the way that are humans, time lords, aliens, all kinds of things. But in the new incarnation of the show, he only picks up humans, which is kind of absurd in my opinion. I think that he should go back to, to picking up aliens. I mean, uh, technically he does pick up an alien, but not really. Jack Harkness is not really an alien. He, you know, he, he's just, he's an immortal and he gets turned into an immortal for some happenstance in, in the first season of uh, the new incarnation. And let me list off some of the doctors and their actors. Uh, Christopher Escalas, Escalaston, sorry, horrible with names, you know this. Uh, David Tennant, Matt Smith, and the most recent one, Peter Capaldi. My opinion, out of the new doctors, David Tennant, hands down, best doctor. A lot of people are gonna give me shit about that. Everybody says, Matt Smith is it. I, I didn't buy his shit. I love David Tennant. I watch anything David Tennant's in because I think he's a freaking phenomenal actor. So that, yeah. David Tennant, hands down, period. Mm -hmm. Fairy companion, Rose Tyler and uh and uh amy pond follow-up companions river song and jack harkness freaking awesome oh my god river song and amy pond's story is just holy shit good i mean talk about freaking awesome tv their series and their twist holy shit i have never found myself saying literally screaming at the tv what the fuck holy crap that was an amazing twist and i just never in my life have i ever gotten that much of a surprise from a tv show ever in my life okay uh just to list off a few episodes if you've never seen the show a lot of the, the episodes are pretty much standalone and they have a revolving story, which I'm I'm gonna say the ones that are standalone episodes first, and my ones that I always recommend to people to watch prior to even starting the show because it, it's a very it, it, you have to like this type of show to be able to enjoy it. So instead of wasting your time and watching three, four seasons, I give two episodes, and you watch those two episodes. If you like it, you'll love this show. If not, skip over it you're not gonna like it all right the first one is of course classic blink where we're introduced into the to um the angels oh my god the sleeping angels freaking love these things all right these things are the statues that you see all right they're just oh my god they're so good they're statues that when you're looking at them, they don't move. But then suddenly, when you turn around, they come at you. And then you, t you turn around back again. You're like, what the fuck was that? It was a breeze or something? And they're closer. And then they get closer and closer and closer. And when they catch you, when they catch you, oh my God, when they catch you, 
you get sent back into time. You don't get killed. You get sent back into fucking time. How cool of an enemy is that? It doesn't kill you. It freaking sends you back into time and it feeds off the energy that you would have used if you existed already. Holy crap, that is such a cool concept. All right, then the other one is Silence in the Library and the Forest of the Dead. This episode, the Doctor, which is David Tennant at this time, and, um, oh, what do you call it? Oh my God, I forgot her name. Whatever. The the companion that she's, I, I don't like her. She's my least favorite. Uh, Catherine Tate, I think it was. Um, don't like her at all. She's annoying, very annoying character. But this episode, they land on the biggest library in the universe. This has a catalog of everything, but there's nobody here. They're like, what? the hell is going on so they try to investigate on what's going on and they get caught up by an exploratory um crew introduced by river song one of my favorite characters again and this episode i don't want to give anything away because it's that good you oh my god this captured me when i saw this and it just it blew my mind it really blew my mind okay after you watch these two these three episodes because the the silence in the library and forest of the dead they're both uh it's a two-parter episode that go together once you've seen those if you like this please check out and watch out for in the seasons the first season uh empty child and the doctor dances oh my god this episode is so cool but you can't understand it if you haven't seen the first few episodes. So, do you want to be my mummy? Are you my mummy? Oh my god, that child is... I still say it every once in a while. It's that iconic, alright? The girl in the fireplace, this is part of the second season in which the doctor lands on a spacecraft that is named after something very special and... It's linked to the timeline of that person, okay? Throughout their whole timeline. And he's stepping through each stone. And the actress that plays the main character in which the doctor goes after is awesome in this, mo in this episode. Freaking loved it. The next one that's really good, The Impossible Planet and Satan's Pit. This is where the doctor encounters the devil okay and the reason why we have the legends that we do of the devil oh my god this is another freaking awesome story that blew my mind okay then skip forward a couple years there's a couple specials here and there that are good but i'm going into the tv show just hard episodes of the tv show the 11th hour introduction to matt smith this episode is such a perfect character introduction. I have never seen character introduction the way it was done in this episode. What the fuck? That ending up scene that he introduces himself and he says, Fuck you, I'm the doctor. I'm gonna kick your ass if you try to fuck with me. Oh my god, it is so good. Just, wow. Never been so enthusiastic about a new character in a show. Oh, love it. Night Terrors, another really, really good episode in which it actually goes into depth about a child's fear for things that are around his uh, everyday house. You know, just a, a child's fear of an elevator, a child's fear about what's underneath the bed. Oh, so good. Um, next one, the God Complex in which they encounter a very legendary creature that uses your worst fear to feed off of it okay and they're stuck in this labyrinth of a hotel room from the 40s and they can't get out and they have to find a way to beat this creature to get out oh so good so good another um another one is the the wedding of river song which is such an awesome episode the Doctor's Wife, in which we actually meet a character that represents the TARDIS's mainframe. Wow. Really good. Um, the Girl Who Waited. 
this episode they land with Amy Pond and uh, Rory on a, a contaminated planet of some random disease. I don't even remember what the hell it was. It's just happenstance on the on the episode. It has nothing to do with it. And they land in a quarantined planet that splits the timeline. Oh my god! And they get stuck in this in this planet, and they're trying to find each other. Ah. Oh. It's such a good episode. Really freaking phenomenal. Um, the New Doctor. Mummy on the Orient Express. And Heaven Sent. Heaven Sent is part of the new season. And this episode reminded me of the, the God Complex. But, oh my god. I've never been so, so much left in a cliffhanger after this episode and so wanting to watch the next episode which was the season finale for for the ninth uh season didn't live up to it but oh my god it was so good and then um face the raven that was another phenomenal episode in which one of the characters that i really didn't like gets what's coming to them and i really liked it i was like oh my god thank god finally Done with that character. Um, the 50th anniversary gets an honorable mention because it was freaking phenomenal. But it's not part of the show. It was a movie. And this movie was freaking awesome. I loved it. And the episode leading up to it. All the little mini episodes leading up to it. Holy shit. It was great. It was phenomenal. And please, if you have not seen this show, check it out. It is sci-fi masterpiece. I mean, this is just freaking great cinema. I mean, I compare it to, to movies because it's that good. Each of those episodes are as good as any movie. I mean, this is comparable to the freaking Twilight Zone from back in the day. I mean, that good, that entertaining, just, oh my God, it is so good. Um, I think that's pretty much it. That covers everything. Please let me know what you think of the show if you have not seen it and what you thought of this recommendation. And please, this is the start of a new year. I want to know what your opinion is so far of the show and any comments, any things that you think I should change because, you know, I learn from you guys. I don't see the same mistakes that you guys will see, the same, you know, blunders that I might have done before. Uh, Tell me if something's cheesy. Tell me if something's overdone. And tell me if something's like, ah, dude, what the fuck are you doing? Why are you doing that shit? Because I really do want to hear it. And starting with the new year, I might change the format sometime down the road. I want to hear your opinion on what I'm doing at the time. Please let me know. Comments down below. Follow the Facebook page at the very end of the show. And check out our feature artist. Please, starting next year, I'm going to be really, really focusing on particular artists and releasing their whatever they give me rights to, to actually show okay um trailers i have put a ban on freaking trailers i am done cabin in the woods trailer i had to chop that thing up because it was that freaking bad it revealed one of the most most important and most shocking things if you hadn't seen the trailer so i'm done with the trailers we're not showing them anymore and if we do, I'm only going to show the teaser trailer that does not show shit. Just the, the images of the film, stuff like that. Or if I think the trailer doesn't show anything that's really revealing and I could show it and, you know, live with it, basically. But I have officially banned freaking trailers from this show. Done with this bullshit with the trailers. There are many movies and just ruining shit. Done with it. So, please let me know. Rev uh, leave me some comments and recommend the show to your friends. Come on, guys. I want to really get this out there and I really want to promote the show as much as possible for you guys. So you guys be able to, I'll be able to afford better things to be able to present to you and give you guys better quality show. All right. Thank you guys. And I'm going to see you guys next week on Friday. Like always. See y'all. Bye.